Good morning. Welcome to uh, the fourth message about spiritual disciplines. This will be about uh, praying in secret. And this is not nearly as black and white as there is subtlety and has to do with attitude. Uh, before I begin, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. You do not know how much it encourages me. Um, regarding secrecy in prayer, there's a specific application of it. And I think that, like so many things, it can be taken to extremes. Um, the Word of God says in a very specific way, in certain kinds of matters, pray in secret. And it says in other ways, there is an absolute spiritual mandate to pray in public. And I'll explain that to you in a moment. Matthew 6, 5 and 6 says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This is not against public prayer. This is against a very specific application of prayer. I want to direct you to to be seen by others. Now, this has to do with vanity. It has to do with displays of religiosity. There is a very specific analogy we can apply in our society. There are those that spend all year preparing for the summer because they want to go to the beach. Now, there are beautiful things about the beach. I go to beaches where there's wildlife. Last beach I went to is near a lighthouse, and I got within 20 feet, I think 20 feet is the legal limit, of a sleeping elephant seal, and it was incredible. Um, I don't like sand, just to be honest with you, but I love the feeling of being inside the ocean. I love the there's something so powerful and so uh, symbolic of the awesomeness of God to be inside the ocean, to feel its cold, to feel its energy. Um, it's amazing. But there are those of us that spend all year dieting and so they can fit into a beautiful bathing garment um, so that they can be, everyone say it together, seen by others. See that? See how it Connects all together. When you go to be seen by others, you are saying, look what I did to make myself great. Please be impressed by me. And therefore, praying to be seen by others is like a spiritual bikini. A spiritual mankini. That's just a funny word. Okay. So, the person who prays just to be seen by others is the person that just goes to the beach just to be seen by others. Uh, not to be awed by the beauty of creation. Not to get vitamin D synthesized through your skin. Not to have fun with your friends and family. Uh, but, itchy. But to be seen by others. Now, it may be clearly manifesting to your spirit that you do this, and it may be something you want to pray to have God reveal to you. Vanity is one of the most secret things that others can see about us that we can't see about ourselves. Um, I couldn't tell you if there was a spot on my nose. This video can tell me. But I can't see my own nose. I can't see my own eyes without the benefit of a camera or a mirror or some other reflective surface. This is not anti-public prayer. This is anti-bikini prayer. I know. That's crazy. It just came to me recently. Now, the reason I can say it's not anti-public prayer is because we've got two, at least two other major verses that give a strong exhortation from the Holy Spirit, from the heart of God, about the need for public prayer. Matthew 10, 8 says, Heal the sick, 
cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now this is a direction having to do with the power of God in the disciples and in you to carry out the mission of God. As I've mentioned in other aspects of other messages, I take this very seriously. I have been used by God to be a tool for healing the sick. Now once again, I'm not gifted, I'm obedient. And to cast out devils. I have not yet been involved with cleansing lepers or raising the dead. I pray that I will be at some point. But these things were done in public prayer. They were done with the power of God and the Holy Spirit using me as a tool and my hand placed on someone. What I picture is that this hand is reaching up toward God and connecting with Him. Even though the, the, this God lives in me and the Holy Spirit, Jesus lives inside me. And then this hand is reaching out and touching the person. And I'm a conduit, I'm just a, a vessel, I'm just a, a, a cord, a cable between two things. But it becomes necessary. Some of those things will happen in private. But if somebody approaches me on the street, like I said, I spent two years at street ministry doing that pretty much all day, every day. I wasn't there seven days a week, obviously. But that was the bulk of what I did. Um, and it happened in public because that's where the people are. You have to do it where the people are. You can't say, would you come home with me? Would you come inside a church to do that with me? That could happen. But 90% of the powerful prayer that I've done has been on the sidewalks. And I don't care that anyone is watching. I do hope that it becomes an example that inspires others to do the same, but I don't want their approval. First Titus 2 eight, Paul says, I will therefore, and that is I desire, it is my will that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. This is vaguely political. Uh, we live in a time where public expressions of religion are frowned upon, um, where uh, examples of the Ten Commandments find themselves removed from public places because of people's desire to disassociate the administration of a country with the observation of a faith. We must be bold at all times. This is the heart of God. That when God must be praised, we praise Him where we are, in our home or out there. But the main admonition against what I'm calling bikini prayer, bathing suit prayer, is that the attitude that says I have crafted prayer skills to impress people, to make myself look religious, make myself look godly, is nonsense. And it invalidates any reward you might have from God for prayer, for godliness, for giving. It says quite clearly, you can have this reward or this reward. This is the one that comes from people approving of you because of how impressive you are. And this is the one that comes from God blessing you because you did it with the right attitude from Him. So, do pray to cast out devils. Do pray to raise the dead. Do pray to cleanse lepers. Do pray to heal the sick. Lay hands on people when it is necessary. Do pray in public. But do so for God. Do not pray to impress others. Do not pray as a way of showing your great religious stature and your great religious fervor, your ability to fill 10 or 20 minutes with your own talking. I have found observation, this is just an observation, that most spirit-led prayer does not go on and on and on and on. That the longer a prayer goes, where people are around to see it, the greater likelihood is that the person is giving a bathing suit prayer, is trying to establish himself as the best prayer establish himself as the most godly or spiritual person. I'm sure there are exceptions, but most spiritual things do not make a show of themselves in public human settings. Um, it reminds me of something I hope to say in a future video about angels. Be very cautious if angels want to talk to you a lot. 
they have just a few functions, and those are war, and worship, and messenger. And there may be a couple of others I'm missing, that's generally it. And they are spirit. They have no soul, they have no body, they can manifest in a body, but they're a pure spiritual life form. Meaning that they have no social needs as we understand. They are pointed either spiritually toward God, or the ones that have fallen spiritually toward Satan. If they have a message for you, they come in and get it. You notice how impatient the angel is with Balaam. Impatient is the wrong word, but he doesn't have a lot of time to chat. Listen, I came to stop you. And if you weren't going to listen to me or the donkey, I was going to kill you. What a really impersonal, inhuman thing to say. But our we become gullible because we project human traits onto angels. And I mean that in the sense that most of the times people are involved in angel worship or involved in like, oh, I had these long conversations with angels. Generally, it's something demonic because angels, as a rule, would like to be in the presence of God and they're sent out for the presence of God to give you a message. They don't have a lot of time to chat with it or sent out for the presence of God to wage war on something and kill something. I'm confident of this. I'm confident this is the truth. And so long conversations, the spiritual life forms, having long conversations in the physical world is a red flag. So, bringing me back in a circle to long show a public press. Use the word of God when you pray. Focus on it. Make a clear point. If you need to have an hour-long prayer, that is, I think, why this, this you talk about a room where someone prays in private. Um, I have the benefit of living by myself. And so, every room, I'm praying in private. We're here to be God's representatives in an earthly place, doing things that bless, doing things that encourage. So much of Jesus' ministry on earth was healing and speaking, and he would go off by himself for these long, intimate exchanges with God. I could ramble on this for quite a long time. Apparently this is a nerve for me, a strong nerve of something I feel very strongly about. I hope that you have been encouraged about this spiritual discipline of praying in silence. It is too much as fasting kills the pride. Public so private prayer kills that thing in us that wants to use prayer to impress others. Kills our desire to take our prayer as a spiritual bathing suit to the spiritual beach. Hope this has been edifying and encouraging. In Jesus' name, please like and subscribe. Amen.